In this video, we're going to consider using the superposition theorem in DC circuit analysis. We're going to start out with this circuit, a uh, fairly simple, a trivial circuit. We have two supplies, a 5 volt supply and 10 volt supply. They're connected series aiding. In order to find the current through the resistor, we simply add up the voltages, 10 plus 15, and use Ohm's law to calculate the current. 15 divided by 1000 ohms is 15 milliamps. But let's consider what happens if we try to figure out what the current is doing from each source independently. So let's uh, pretend we have just the 5 volt source in the circuit. So with just the 5 volt source in the circuit, uh, we have a supply voltage of 5 volts, uh, still have a 1K resistor, so Ohm's law will tell us we have 5 milliamps. And we could do the same thing with the 10 volt source. We apply 10 volts as a supply, 1K as a resistor, and we will get a current of 10 milliamps. So uh, notice something interesting here uh, is that if you add together that 5 milliamps and 10 milliamps, we get the 15 milliamps that we originally started with. And the 15 milliamps is what happens with both sources together. So uh, what this illustrates is a principle called superposition. And there is actually a theorem of uh, that in circuit analysis. So here's the more general superposition for any kind of a linear system. I'll give you a moment to read that. And this is the superposition theorem that we use in circuit analysis. All right, so what does all this mean? I think the easiest way is to simply look at an example, and then we'll talk about a procedure for how to utilize this. So we'll go to the first uh, example here. We have two sources. Uh, this time they are not in series, and each source will have its own series resistor, and uh, that will be applied across a load resistor. So we don't have any uh, procedure for analyzing a circuit like this, uh, at least prior to this superposition theorem. Uh, what superposition is going to allow us to do is to figure out what is the total load current due to both of these sources. So using this theorem, uh, what we're going to do is analyze the circuit as if there was only one source in the circuit. And then we're going to do the same thing for the other source, take our two answers and add them together. So uh, using superposition, the first thing we do is to just have the 10 volt source in the circuit. The 5 volt, we're going to remove it from the circuit and replace it with a short circuit. So you can see in the center of the circuit, uh, a little grayed out supply there of 5 volts. We basically uh, kind of erase that and replace it with a short circuit. So now we have the 10 volt source. The 10 volt source is in series with the 12K resistor. And then there are two resistors in parallel, the 5K and the 20K. And we're interested in the current in the 20K. So first we have to find the equivalent resistance that the 10 volt source sees. So that would be 12K. Uh, added to the parallel combination of 5K and 20K. Uh, so uh, product over sum, since it's only two branches. The equivalent resistance for the 10 volt source turns out to be 16,000 ohms. We can use that 16,000 ohms to find the total current uh, from the 10 volt source. That's simply Ohm's law. 10 volts divided by 16K gives, a, gives us 0.625 milliamps. 0.625 milliamps. Uh, one thing I want to note here is my notation. Uh, right here I have IT uh, with a 10 superscript. And that is the total current due to the 10 volt source. It's not raised to the 10 power. It's simply the total current from the 10 volt source. Some people when they do superposition problems will simply make a note in their calculations and say this portion of the calculations for the 10 volt source, this portion is for the 5 volt source. But sometimes some of the equations uh, maybe uh, 
it's not really clear which one you're talking about. So I like to include that information directly in the equation. So that's why I use the superscript to indicate which source it's from. So that is the total current due to the 10 volt source. Now, if we want the current through the load resistor, we have to use current divider. So uh, the notation, again, load current due to 10 volt source would be the total current uh, from the 10 volt source. And it gets divided between the 5K and the 20K. So let's uh, just remind you of the formula for current divider. Here are our formulas. And we're actually going to use the most general one here. Uh, I through branch N is a total current uh, multiplied by REQ of the parallel branches divided by the resistance of the branch that we're interested in. So how do we apply that to our circuit? Well, here's where we left off. We had left off with the total current of 0.625 milliamps, and that's going to get divided between the 5K and the 20K. So uh, we have the total current, 0.625, multiplied by 4k divided by 20k. Now remember the 4k is simply the parallel combination of the 5k and the 20k. It's not the REQ of the whole circuit, it's only the equivalent of the parallel resistors. So that's where the 4k comes from, the uh, equivalent resistance of just the parallel resistors. Uh, the 12k does not play a role there. And then of course you divide by the 20k which is the resistor we're interested in the load resistor. So when you do that calculation, you get 0.125 milliamps. That is the current through the load due to the 10 volt source. So we're going to now do the same thing for the 5 volt source. So we put the 5 volt source back in the circuit and we remove the 10 volt source. Notice when we remove the 10 volt source, we replace it with a short circuit. So now the 5 volt source has the 5K resistor in series and then we have the 20K and the 12K in parallel. So the equivalent resistance is 5K plus product uh, over sum, 12K times 20K over the sum of the two. Uh, we get a value of 12.5 kiloohms. Now we use that along with Ohm's law to find the total current from the 5 volt source. That's 5 divided by 12.5K or 4 tenths of a milliamp, 0.4 milliamp. And just like before, we apply a current divider, uh, 0.4 milliamp times 7.5, which is that uh, 12K parallel 20K, divided by the 20K, which is the one we're interested in, and we get a value of 0.15 milliamps. Now, superposition says the total current through the load due to both sources is the current from each individual source added together. So we take those two values and add them together, 0.15 milliamps and 0.125 milliamps, and we get a value of 0.275 milliamps. So again, the load current in total, that's for both sources, is 0.275 milliamps. That's our final answer. So let's just recap our procedure here. Uh, what we have done is we have said, uh, in order to use superposition, remove all of your sources except, except one. Now we use an example with just two sources in, but this works for more than two sources. Uh, so remove all the sources except for one, and if it's a voltage source, you're going to replace it with a short circuit. Uh, if it's a current source, you replace it with an open, and that assumes that we're dealing with ideal sources. Uh, if it's not an ideal source, if there's some internal resistance, uh, then you replace the voltage source with that internal resistance, and uh, same thing with the current source. Instead of having an open, you would put the internal resistance of the current source there. But since we're assuming ideal sources, uh, we just uh, take the voltage source, replace it with a short. Solve for whatever it is you're looking for. In this case, it was the load current. Uh, repeat that procedure for each of the sources. In our example, we had two of them, so we did it twice. Take your two answers and add them together, and that's the answer for what you would get for total current uh, if that's what you're solving for, for all the sources. So that's our general procedure that we use when using superposition. So good luck with superposition problems. Hopefully this video has helped you a bit.